Elos. Well, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to another Ration Cast. And today, we are having a look at a Viego mid lane game. Might or might not be a Viego one trick given the name. Need her, which is obviously leading to the obsession of Viego with his lost wife. And Viego the boy. Hmm, the man, the myth, the legend is now going to be here in the mid lane, which is going to be very interesting. He will be facing off against Nakali, which uh, is a very, very strong trade and generally pretty strong at skirmishing and does very well versus the other melees. So we will see how exactly that ends up working out. I'm expecting a little bit of a possess. One thing to Many point out here is that the enemy similar. team probably expected magical damage in the mid lane. They probably expected the Silas to be mid lane and Viego to be in the jungle, which means that Akali probably has mismatched Quince. Probably is running MR instead of armor, which isn't too crazy for Viego as he's not, you know, he's not a Zed. Anything? Okay, so he proceeds instantly attacking the wave, which is interesting, right? So his goal, I would assume, is to get, gain control of the wave for the level 2. Alright, goes in for the Q. And, uh, yeah, this, this is what I was concerned about, is if he tries to trade, Kali can just Q him on, on his way there. Alright, that seems to be fine so far. Good. That was a that was a good W. So he caught her out. Short trading combo. Um, this is just the advantage of level two. Yeah. So his plan when trading her is to double her skill. Probably always. Okay. Decent job. Now where are we going to board though? He elects to just keep the pressure on to very interesting so there again right the WQ it's almost like he's using his Q to poke it's very interesting okay that was good quick Q auto attack Akali is taking some unnecessary trades here remember this is Korean challenger so this is like as high as it gets when it comes to skill level on like the technical side and beautiful trade and he takes out Akali. Wait, we need to we need to go back. We need to we need to watch that again. Holy moly, dude. I was so I yeah, I think this is definitely an armor difference. So here he gets a good trade on her, right? And then now she has her W used. And so he goes, alright, sure. W auto attack and the ignite all together and she realized that she died the second that you know he had applied that ignite and not before very interesting yeah that was such a min max trade like she would have never expected that to work if he was a silas and he was trading there she would have expected that i think this is uh, the upside of playing a champion that is not often seen in a lane Alright, so now we are running the Vamp Scepter. I'm expecting him to prioritize boots after this, probably, because I think that boots are... I mean, I would expect boots to be very, very important on Viego. But then there's also the Tiamat question, right? You probably need Tiamat just to be able to push in waves. We'll see, so... Right now, this could be a Tiamat, like a Hydra, but this could also be a, which I, I'm expecting, because that's so good on him. Um, the Blade of the Rune King. I love that Riot managed to put to do it that way, that Viego just is way too strong with Blade of the Rune King, and you build it before building Mythics. I just love that. Oh, the W miss. 
but he's confident that he can still win the trade, which I find interesting. Yeah, so he still lost that. I mean, staying in the staying in the shroud was a bad idea. He lost that trade in the shroud. Yeah, Akali, Akali is quite safe. Alright, we're trying to fight. Let's see, okay, Smite goes down here, which means, yeah, there is no possibility. Sinus one coming with you. Let's see how this one goes. Yeah, he's probably dead here, right? He does have flash, wait. How did he not die then? How... What? Really interesting. So he's using his passive. He's using his passive healing. Oh, he's using the the auto attack, the, the the healing from his auto attack, right? To heal himself up. Interesting. So he's like putting the the chickens to max tether range and then healing. Well, that didn't work out very well, but he's still alive, which uh, I find interesting. He's also playing very aggressively. He has his ultimate now. Oh no! You got Ah, uh, that wasn't good. Beautiful bait. And that is keep on going down. Ooh, yeah, so Silas, Silas and Diego are pretty nasty combos. Good auto attack buffer. This is what you need to learn when playing versus Akali. There he goes. Well, that was... Honestly, that was uh, impressive. So, you can really tell that this guy knows the micro on this champion, right? Very, very clean. Not many missed, missed abilities, missed auto attacks. At least where, wherever, you know, you need to hit him. And now, he's kind of locked himself in as well. Which means he is going for a Blade of the Rune King first. I still find it interesting that he is not opting for Wave Flu here. But of course, Blade of the Rune King just so good. So good in Diego. So, with Cannon and Wukong, it's going to be a little bit hard for him to have a lot of impact on the games later on, as very easily what could happen is that just Akali just like kind of flips around and jumps around on him while he gets AoE down by Wukong and Cannon and constantly stunned and knocked up and then stunned again, like... Yeah, we'll see. Oh, it's the same problem for the Silas. But at least Silas does have a really good ultimate. You know, we're so confident at fighting this that we have decided to... Silas is in a little bit of trouble here. Diego kind of out of the fight, can't really do anything. He's fine to get onto the cannon. Go pick up the cannon. And from that point on, it's gonna be rough for the blue team. He has to be a little bit careful here now. Picks up a kill onto the blue box. Picks up Blue Kong W and that is Pike going down and he will just continue to run it down. Yeah, unless yeah, unless Varus shows up, which is a little unfortunate. Okay, decent Q, but didn't really follow it up with anything. Obviously can't with Akali being there. So very, very well played by this Viego mid lane player. But not the best game situation in general. That was it. Okay. So we are trading the Akali. 
def definitely doesn't benefit the Akali, I think, over trading here, but maybe, maybe breakpoint wise, this was actually better for her, and then it would be. So if she if she actually gets to recall on a better item now. Well, she does slightly. So it, it, it's slightly favored for her, but very slightly. All right, not bad though. He is in a very good position to carry this game. It's going to be very interesting to see. Because Galio, Galio and Silas potentially can win these games on their own. Pick up cannon ult, run the enemy team down, Parent Galio team. ult on top. Double kill. However, one problem with Galio ult often is that there's not a lot of things keeping... Decides to go for the go down here. And he yeah, so this was very well done. He didn't instantly pick up Varus, which a lot of beginning <laughs> do. He waited a second, which is a very, very smart idea, and then chased with the AD. Which is very good. So that's a, that's a solid one. Right? If you're ahead and you get all these items, maybe not picking up something, but getting your damage rotation out and then picking up is better, especially if it's an AD carry, right? You get those AD carry items. But yeah, not bad, and this is obviously, this is obviously absolutely disgusting. No one's used to a Viego being this strong. Right? No one's used to, this is kind of the... This is kind of the, the natural mid lane type deal. Very interesting. I would love to see this pick... Or how this pick works versus control mage as well, because I think this is just a like a Kali and Silas specific champion. Okay. Like you can play, probably say it versus Talon, you can probably uh, can you play it versus Zed? Yeah, most likely play it versus Zed. You know. But imagine playing this versus a Victor. Or something along those lines. A, si a Syndra. Like you were just I mean, yeah, you just need to, you just need a jungler that is able to gank very well, like, with very, very strong ganks. To set up for you, and then you don't even have that crazy. Ooh, very good W. See, this is, okay, so this was a very, very good W. He actually held that W right until he couldn't anymore, and then he considered that obviously his W is a very very important spell so Cannon would do everything to dodge it even to kind of walk back into lane put himself into a worse position which then becomes obviously problematic if he point that was Cannon all that was not very good Again, spect spectator, kind of questionable with the graphical overlay of spells. It's the same with teleport as well. Still a good one. Double your flash onto the weaker and he will make himself out of another one. Not a bad job. Not a bad job. So I think that I think it's very interesting that he's running shield bow here as well. Need to point that out as well. Is kind of it's kind of weird, right? And I do want to know what exactly is. Oh my god, what is this healing? That is actually nasty. Like, look at this healing. Holy moly. I mean, I guess it's a healing passive plus two healing passive, right? So he's baiting in. What? Oh, interesting. He decided not to commit there. Yeah, the Blue Kong coming as well. 
Okay, gotta be a little bit careful here. And now Karma's around. Karma together with Diego is pretty strong. Uh, me and a friend, we played duo bot lane together and we noticed that Renata and Diego is such a ridiculous game. It's so ridiculous. And especially if the Diego gets ahead, there's just no holding him back anymore. They can't even kill him. Oh, yeah. I pick up his probably the worst that could have happened in that situation. Diego for himself up the double kill, make that a triple problem. Alright, just to connect and he will take down the blue Kong and the Kali as well. Now they attack you. And that is a quadra. Are we going for the penta? We are most definitely going for the penta. Ah, uh, no give. Boring. Unlucky, no Penta. But still. Very, very good situation for our Viego Enjoyer. The simplest lecture. Alright, let's see, let's see what his next item is. I kind of want to know. Okay. That's nice. So, this is... This is just, like, all healing items, by the way. Like, Death Stance as well. Death Stance on Diego is pretty good. But the, the thing that I find interesting is that he's not going for a split push type build. He's not... He's not going to be as strong in the side lane as he could be with something like a Hydra. I find that very interesting. I generally find it interesting that he doesn't go Hydra because I would have thought that that item is ridiculously strong on Viego. Not a good look. Wait, Kali could have gotten out of that. What? Kali could have gotten out of that though. Weird. Maybe not, but... Now I think she could have gotten out of that. If she just flips over the wall with the first ultimate, then runs away, then her second ultimate comes up. And at some point her shuriken comes up as well. Shuriken flip. Should be possible. Hmm. Yeah, we are not really into pushing waves. As much as we are into fighting the fight. I always hate it whenever I see this. Because the decision making on that, you know that the decision making on that isn't as clear as So I always find it frustrating because it's not, there's no apparent pattern there, right? Obviously, no. The rule he's following is probably pretty much this one. Push side lane whenever there is no like big fight looming, but try to be part of every fight because obviously you are very important in fights and you are also very strong in them. In this, in this position, he is pretty much holding all the gold value. So him getting more gold probably way less valuable for his team than him getting like. You know, than him being in fights. So I think that's kind of the, the trade off here. Right? It's something that you see on something with Mark a lot. Uh, it seems like he is able to pick up the best stance here. This is absolutely great. Stance left in his hands now. Ooh, God. And yeah, this is a nasty freaking build. The Undying Viego. The thing that I'm, the thing that I'm, yeah, I, I, I don't know. The thing that I'm surprised about is him not going for cr something like Kraken Slayer, for example. But I suppose there's not enough tankiness in here. Right, there's a lot of burst damage. Okay, so now he is actually side laning a whole lot. Seems to come from the judgment that he's like, okay, my team can actually do this. 
Silas is doing very well. I find that very interesting, though. I find it very interesting that he, he was so keen on participating in fights before. And now he isn't. Even though he built his... Like, even though he completed his item. Like, look at what he's accomplished. Not really anything. I mean, he pushed that weight in, right? Which he could have kept back there and then Akali has to overextend, right? Now he kind of pushed that wave in and what happens now? Like, not really anything for him. Right. Let's see, so we push in the wave here and this is actually where something could come from it because now he is obviously closer to his team and he will be able to rotate around. I don't think he's very threatening to power, but he does. Oh, the ultimate picks up power, that is a double kill for Diego already. Picks up the blue power for the heal. That is one power down here. That is probably even more. I don't know, we make the decision to not fight it. It's surprising, to be honest, because I figured they didn't have the power. Sure. Still very high damage dealt and we are going into a wits end. whenever i whenever i talk about wits end until i say the name of the item i'm always like is it is it actually that name is that actually the correct name of the of the item and then i just like do the trust fall and i'm like yeah it's actually that item i don't know why Maybe because Wits End doesn't really mean a lot to me. Diego in a little bit of trouble here. But Kana is around, so he should be able to sustain himself up. Yeah, and so he does see some blue from picks up the cannon. And now we are going to be running down the enemy team as a cannon. Oh yeah, Viego Ultimate still available. Viego Ultimate will come out. The W cancels by the Q. Silas picks up one kill. And are we going to be able to pick up a second? No. Ooh, Akali now on the Silas. Can we help the Silas? Yes, we can. Akali's still looking at Silas though. Still kind of trying to set something up. Yeah, perfect execution. Will not find the Viego though. The Akali playing this very well, but... Both of the guys still have flash, and so she will eventually go down. That was a very, very close situation during my But I guess that's what we want. Ooh, ultimate into tower range. Picks up Wukong now. And he's almost back to full life again, which is pretty great. Alright. Oh, really good hook. Yeah, we need to dive here. Okay, Varus picked up, so now it is. Still kind of worth. Yeah, that was a, that was a kind of weird fight because the call was to go out, but then you know, yeah, you gotta be very careful here as the Diego. Yeah, you gotta be yeah, very careful because you have the 80 carry stats, right? So you are not nearly. There he goes down. That is his first death of the game. I want to find out. As uh, I. Uh, Oh, Silas. Why are you such a balanced champion, my dude? Ah! Oh, oh my god, Silas is such a broken piece of champion, dude. It's, it's incredible, let's be honest. It is absolutely incredible. I mean, Diego as well, though. Both of those champions are uh, kind of questionable. Huh? With being able to pick up other champions in items, that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous, though. which is kind of weird. Because right? oftentimes it just needs one big blunder from the enemy team, and Viego is like back in the game. Not, not the best. Both situations interesting. So, what would the last item be here? Maybe a spectral vision. <laughs> Maybe just a spectral visit. I want to point out that every, all, every one of his items, except his freaking boots, has lifesteal on it, right? So every there's some kind of healing on every one of his items. 
And obviously, he also has it on his custom, right? So... Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of feels like he's memeing, you know? But... Who knows? He is really very, very elite level player, so... You know, obviously, not quite the best players, but this is always something that you can't really, you can't really uh, quantify like that, is that obviously pro players are so much better. Like, oh, well, I kind of... Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay on.